Okay, so the inverting op amp amplifier, it, to properly understand how it works and why it works the way it does, we need to remember the ideal characteristics of an op amp. So, I'll draw our symbol first because that's sort of the centre of it. And the input impedance, so basically, what does the input impedance tell us about and what should it be? So an ideal op amp has what input impedance? Infinity. Very, high, very, very high or infinite. Okay, and what does that tell us about the current on those inputs? Basically zero, isn't it? So we get no current going into the inputs. And the output can provide whatever current we need. So it's got a very, very low output impedance. Okay, so we have to remember that the current on the inputs of these things is basically zero. So you can kind of think of it as being we can only really have a voltage there. We're not going to get any current going into the amplifier. So any current at that point has to go elsewhere. Okay. If I have my inverting amplifier that looks like this, what I do to make it an amplifier is connect the output to the inverting input in this case. So remember when we had the hysteresis with the op amp comparator, we connected the output to the non-inverting input, and that had an effect of changing which value it turned on at, um, but it would still only saturate high or low. Okay, so it was basically an on-off device, and it would only saturate high or low. If we changed it so that instead of having the um, output connected to the non-inverting, but to the inverting instead, Effectively what we're doing is we're changing that hysteresis point, so instead of having the hysteresis going in this direction, like that, basically if I change it to be on the inverting input, I'm really I'm changing this point to be up here instead. Okay? And so if you think of it like this, if I go past, so if I'm increasing my input voltage, when I go past this point here, it's going to make it saturate low. But then, if I'm below this point here, it wants to saturate high. And so, in this little region in here, it kind of wants to saturate low and high at the same time. And it can't do that. And so what actually happens is it makes it so that it's not saturated. And there's only one condition where that won't happen. There's only one time when, or one, one input condition where the output is not saturated, and that is when the difference between the two input pins is zero. Okay, so the voltage between the two input pins is zero when we have this negative feedback. Okay, and that's because we can sort of think of it like this it's trying to saturate both low and high, can't do that, and so it doesn't saturate, and the only condition that, that's allowed is when the difference between the two input pins is zero. Another way you can think of it is when we have this negative feedback, it makes the amplifier, the op amp chip itself, do whatever it can to make the difference between those two pins zero. Okay? So that's an important key thing to remember with when we have this negative feedback, we need to have that input pin difference zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, connect the non-inverting input pin to zero volts. So this voltage here doesn't change, it's zero volts. We've got a negative voltage and a positive voltage on our supply pins. And just for the sake of ease, make it easier, we can assume that the output can go up to whatever this supply voltage is here and down to whatever this negative supply voltage is here. Okay? So we're not going to worry about that plus or minus one volt business, just for the sake of uh, making it easy. Clear. And here is my input signal. Okay, so the input signal there is going to be a voltage, and it's going to have, being a signal, it's going to be uh, have an amplitude and a frequency related to it. Okay. So the amplitude is simply the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of my input signal, and the frequency is how many times a second that repeats its cycle. Okay, 
And we're going to, on the output here, have a, another, uh, another voltage, okay? And it's going to have an amplitude and a frequency. Now the frequency of the input and the output are going to be the same, okay? The amplitude, however, are going to be different. And we'll work out how we can calculate what that uh, amplitude, how we can calculate it using the uh, resistance values, okay? If we want to, we can measure the input and the output voltage, and then if we take the ratio of the two, so V out divided by V in, that gives us the gain. So the gain is simply the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. So another way of thinking about it is how many times bigger is the output voltage than the input voltage? So if we had a gain of two, then whatever our input voltage is, we're going to multiply that by two, and that'll be our output voltage. Right? So the gain is simply the ratio of the, to the output to the input voltage. And we could measure that, so we could use an oscilloscope to measure that, which some of you have already been doing. Okay, where you using the oscilloscope, you line up the, the divisions that are on your oscilloscope with the peaks and the troughs, and you count them, and you use the scale that you've set it to to measure the input and the, uh, the, the voltage, so the peak to peak voltage. Okay, and so uh, we can measure that. But we can also, if I was given a diagram, I could predict what the output voltage is going to be for a given input voltage, or I could predict what the gain is going to be by simply looking at these resistors. And I'll show you how, how we can do that. Um, I'm going to name some of these resistors just to make it easy. So this is the feedback resistor, which is the resistor connecting the output back to the input. So it's feeding back some of the output signal back into the input, okay? So I'll call it RF for feedback, and this will be the resistor that's between our input signal and the input of our op amp. So we're gonna call it RI for input. Okay, so we've got RF and RI, and you might remember from when we I first talk, started talking about these op amps, how the, the difference between the function of the inverting and the not inverting inputs was if I have the signal connected to the inverting input, it tends to invert the signal. So what I mean by inverting is if my V in looked like that, then an inverted version of that would be just the upside down. Okay? So where the input signal is increasing, if it's the output is inverted, then the output will be decreasing at the same time. Okay? So we should be seeing an increasing on the input correspond with a decreasing output and vice versa. A decreasing input gives me an increasing output. Or another way you can think about it, we've got peaks, so the maximum input here lines up with the troughs of our output and vice versa. So that is an inverted um, signal and our input signal on this diagram here is connected to the inverting input. Yeah, the non-inverting input is connected to zero volts, so that will have no effect on, on our signal at all. And so we're going to be having an inverting amplified signal. Okay? And I can calculate the gain just by looking at this as being simply the ratio of the feedback resistor to the input resistor. And to show that it's inverted, you can sort of think of this, if I were to multiply this by minus 1, then it's the same as inverting, okay? So, negative. I'll take the negative ratio of the feedback divided by the input resistance. Okay, so both of these two formulas are how we could either measure or calculate from the resistances the gain for an inverting amplifier. Okay, um, okay so if I now um, figure out, okay, why does this formula, how does this formula work, I'll show you how that works. Okay, this will only take another couple of minutes, so it won't be very long, and then we're done. Okay, so remembering what we were saying before, 
in that the amplifier, when we have this negative feedback, is doing whatever it can to keep these two voltages the same. Okay? So if this voltage here is zero volts, what can we say the amplifier is trying to hold the input pin here, the inverting input, what's the voltage at this point here? If it's the same as this point, it's got to be zero volts, doesn't it? Okay, so if that's zero volts and it doesn't change because it's connected to ground, then this will also be zero volts and not changing. Okay, and so we could call this thing a virtual earth or ground. Okay, and the reason is because it has the same voltage as ground because I've connected the non-inverting input to ground but it's not actually connected to ground it's actually got a very very high resistance between here and ground but the amplifier is going to do whatever it can to keep that voltage at that point zero or equal to this one okay so that's why it's a virtual curve um, okay so if that voltage there is zero and not changing and if I have a voltage on the input here, I can redraw this part, so just this Ri, as being like this. Okay? So we've got a voltage across a resistor. If you have a voltage across a resistor, what do you get? Flowing through it, a current, going up. Okay, so we've got a voltage on the input, a resistance on the input, so we therefore must have a current flowing into that input. So we've got a current, I'll redraw this current here, there. I'm just going to call it I. So that current going into or through this resistor this way, can that go anywhere into the op amp? Can that current, can any of this current go into the op amp? No, why is that? So it, has to it has to go past, it has to go around it, but why can't current go into that input? We talked about it right at the beginning of this session. It's negative. And it's also got a very high input impedance. Okay? Now high input impedance means no current. Okay? So the current through here is zero. Alright? So basically it's like it's not even there. It's like it's not connected. So if the current is flowing through this point here, it can't go through there, so where must it go? It must go that way. Okay? So we must have a current, instead of going into the, the op amp input pin, it must be going through this feedback resistor. So I can draw that in this way, where we have a current which is the same value as I in. Or I, okay. So we've got a current flowing in the opposite direction relative to this one. So it's coming back out again, but it's going through my feedback resistor. So if we have a current flowing through a resistor, what does that produce across the resistor? Ohm's law says it must be a voltage. Well done. Okay. okay. And so we can actually calculate that voltage. V equals I times R, but in this case, we've got V out, so out, and RF. Okay, so it's just Ohm's law. <coughs> so we can't have any current going away from this point here. It all has to go up into this point here. And so the voltage across RF is going to be simply that current times that resistance. But well, we already figured out what that current was, didn't we? The current flowing into it is simply going to be Ohm's law again. Uh, let's say, I'll do it here. I equals, it's going to be the... It's going to be that, isn't it? The current is simply this voltage divided by this resistance. Okay, Ohm's law again, just for this part. Okay, but it's the same current flowing through here so my output voltage is going to be my input voltage 
divided by my input resistance and multiplied by the feedback resistance. Okay? So if I were to divide or make this so that I look at it in this respect, so the ratio of the output to the input voltage. Oh, I see something I've forgotten here. This current is in the opposite direction. So I really should say it's a negative current there. Right? So if the directions, the, the magnitude is the same, but the direction is the opposite, then we can say it's a negative that. And so this negative current here will give me a negative there. And so if I look at the ratio of the output to the input voltages, so let's just simply divide both sides by the V in, then I'm going to have RF divided by R in and negative. Okay? Which is what we have here. Okay? So remembering V out divided by V in is our gain, which is equal to RF divided by, or negative RF divided by RI. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so I think just to summarise, when we have the feedback resistance, the op amp will do whatever it can to keep to stop it from saturating. It can't saturate because if the, it, if it wants to try to go towards saturation, you can think of it like if this wants to go towards saturation negative, it's going to pull this lower than this one, which wants to make it saturate positive, and so it'll it'll bring it back itself up to up to or want to go the other way. Okay. So every time this one deviates a little bit downwards, it has to do something to bring it back up again, okay? And it will do that. And so if the, um, you can sort of think of the op amp will do whatever it can to keep the difference between the two input pins zero. The input impedance makes it so that there is no current that can go into that pin. And so if we have a voltage on the input, then the current flowing through that input resistance is simply going to be the ratio of V in divided by the resistance input, R in. Okay? But because the current can't go anywhere else but back through the feedback resistance, then it will mean that the output voltage must be uh, a negative value, which is the negative times, uh, must be the ratio of the resistances there for that current to be the same. Okay? So, in order for the op amp to do whatever it can to keep this input voltage zero, it must go to a negative relative to the positive input, and the ratio of that voltage difference there, or ratio of those two voltages, must be the same as the ratio um, of these resistances. Okay. Um, the idea of a virtual earth, you don't need to fully understand it. I th and for the most part, you don't need to exactly understand why the op amp, inverting op amp works the way it does. In order to be able to fully utilize these things, you really only need to be able to know these formula. Okay? Know that for an inverting amplifier, the input signal is connected to the inverting input, so the minus input. And these are the formula for the, the gains. 